Elon Musk's SpaceX has astounded the world with its ability to produce a rocket engine within 24 hours, unmatched by anyone else for a long time. However, things are about to get even crazier with SpaceX's new giant factory. Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. What exactly has SpaceX just revealed inside the new Starship Gigafactory? And what's the real reason SpaceX built the Gigafactory that Elon Musk has just revealed? In recent times, we've heard a lot about the plans for Starship that Elon revealed in his presentation to all SpaceX employees. But has anyone noticed that to achieve all these goals, SpaceX needs a crucial element first? Yes, that's the construction of the Star Factory plant to mass-produce Starships. Although at this point the factory may not yet be ready to meet the ambitious production goals, it's laying the groundwork for a major revolution in Starship production speed in the near future, as Elon recently stated in his latest speech. So this year we're planning to build another roughly six uh, boosters and ships. And, um, and that production rate will increase a lot uh, next year. That's why we're building the, the giant factory. Indeed, this year will be a busy one for SpaceX. According to the news we previously updated, Elon and SpaceX have aimed for six to nine Starship launches this year which inevitably may require increasing rocket hardware production not only to prepare for launches this year, but also for next year's launches. Six pairs of Starship mentioned by Elon Musk are quite a standard quantity considering that Star Factory is not yet operational, but once complete, it'll undoubtedly be a time of explosive production. Adjacent to the Starship production site, Star Factory is SpaceX's largest ongoing construction project, spanning millions of square meters, a giant structure for production that'll include five floors with 329,500 square feet of office space. If nothing changes, according to Elon's words, the factory will officially operate at full capacity by 2025. However, the special thing about the factory lies not only in its scale, but also in its groundbreaking ideal to achieve what can be said as the foremost unique compared to other aerospace companies in the world. This initiative can be traced back to Tesla's revolutionary gigafactories, symbolizing a shift in the automotive industry model of electric vehicles. As of now, Tesla's gigafactories are among the largest buildings in the world. This absolute size enables Tesla to leverage advanced technologies with efficient automated assembly lines while saving production costs. Each Tesla Gigafactory typically achieves an annual output of hundreds of thousands of vehicles, with Tesla Giga Shanghai capable of reaching a production output of over 950,000 vehicles. Truly, a figure that many other factories admire, and SpaceX is also following suit with that approach. Once the Star Factory plant's complete, the company will embark on mass production of Starships on an unprecedented scale, potentially transforming traditional manufacturing practices in the industry. The closest rocket system to compare with Starship is NASA's Space Launch System, SLS. The SLS design requires components from Boeing, Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, and Aerojet Rocketdyne, all manufactured at various locations across the U.S., then transported nationally to be assembled in Florida in the best way they can manage. However, the SLS is only planned to launch once a year, with a cost of around $4 billion a launch. In reality, it hasn't launched since its first time in 2022, delayed due to the Artemis mission schedule, but it seems there are more technical issues than we thought. Clearly, not an easy ask. Meanwhile, SpaceX is flexible enough to claim that they could build a larger, better rocket every day of the week. Above all, SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell also claims to produce one Starship rocket every day. Well, this is extremely ambitious and seemingly impossible, but not too difficult for SpaceX. Because similar determination was demonstrated a decade ago with Elon's declaration that Tesla would produce one million electric cars in a year. Now the company's not only achieved that goal, but surpassed it. While Elon Musk tends to make insane statements, when it comes to Gwen Shotwell, she's known for her capability and pragmatic approach. Therefore, the set goal is not at all far-fetched. Why can't we build a rocket every day? That's what we're focusing on with Starship, is attacking every part of the production process to be able to build lots of these machines, Shotwell said. To know what will happen inside the Starship factory, we can look at the Starship construction process that SpaceX has been using so far. This process, meticulously refined over years of trial and error, encompasses three fundamental stages. The acquisition of raw materials, the forming and welding of components, and the final assembly and dedicated production base. The journey begins with the acquisition of raw materials, where SpaceX procures giant rolls of 304A1 stainless steel, the building blocks of its iconic Starship vehicles. 
Afterward, it's cut lengthwise to form rings and welded to become the straight sides of the ship and reinforcements for curved parts like the nose cone and interior domes forming the tops and bottoms of fuel tanks. SpaceX receives panels of stamped and stretched stainless steel, which they could weld together. The three original tents represent three strings of Starship components being manufactured in parallel, divided between producing the upper and lower sections of the Starship at the same time. A tent houses the engine section and is dedicated to the lower thrust section of the ship and the reinforcing part, while the central tent accommodates the rings and arches, forming the body and fuel tank of the Starship. Each section comprises three to five welded steel rings. The smaller tent, to the extent that the process allows, cages the uppermost V-ring sections. Subsequently, each outdoor section is prepared according to its specific requirements, with a series of cuts, piping systems, and completed reinforcement for the ship at the upper stage. Insulation panels and heat shields are also fitted here within the tent. Following this, the third tent specializes in producing the nose cone, constructed from long, shaped, and stretched pieces of stainless steel welded together vertically. The nose cone parts are equipped with a heat shield before being rolled out, allowing SpaceX to produce the primary components in booster simultaneously on the ground. However, up to the present moment, the tents have gradually been dismantled by SpaceX, and it's finally time to don a new outfit for Starbase. By now, the completed parts of the Star Factory building have taken on a U-shaped form and are swiftly progressing towards a square layout, ultimately providing a total production space five times larger than what the company had available when they first started building Starships with the three primary tents cleared out. The varying height of the factory between segments makes the production process much smoother by having a continuous production floor instead of three separate tents, giving SpaceX about two to three times more covered floor space. Star Factory also offers significantly more vertical space for Starship as the tents are pyramid-shaped, reaching their maximum height only at the middle section and theoretically being quite low towards the edges. Hence, SpaceX can make each segment a bit taller, ultimately requiring fewer stack sections in the assembly bay. The foundation is progressing rapidly, so this is how SpaceX eventually achieves the point where they produce one Starship every day by having such a massive production space that they can work on several new rockets at the same time, fabricating rocket segments thereafter. The final assembly process is as easy as stacking them up and installing some finishing touches before shipping to the launch site. This will generate a massive production volume for the company to an extent that we never could have imagined. The number of starships produced will undoubtedly need to meet Elon's grand future ambitions. Upon achieving this, Starship will replace the entire fleet of SpaceX rockets and become a central figure in space exploration, especially in missions to Mars. As Elon stated in his presentation, we'll need to build a lot more ships than boosters, especially for Mars. Exactly. With Musk's mindset, Starship flights to the Red Planet might not return because the materials from these ships will be very useful for a base there. And to have a city on Mars to sustain life there, SpaceX will undoubtedly have to produce tens of thousands of ships. I dare say that the current Star Factory will not be the only factory producing Starship. The company will further develop, similar to Gigafactory 1, 2, and 3, will also have Star Factory 1, Star Factory 2, and Star Factory 3. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching and catch you next time.